everybody. All right, we recording y'all. Good to see everybody for a bold November 29th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And when you think about that, that means we only a few months away from the biblical new year. So we have, y'all know we, we went into what month? The ninth month, right? So we only have uh, the rest of this month and three more months and we're going to be in the biblical new year. So you have to see those signs as we're going through Kodesh conversations as an opportunity for you to come closer to Yah and get the instructions that you need for the upcoming new year. Don't get swept away and carried away by all the the New York Times Square, the all of that, the uh, that the New York, uh, the New Year's ball dropping. That that means nothing to those who are following the biblical calendar, except that it's another day that has passed on the Gregorian calendar. So make sure that you're aligning yourself with the timing and the cadence of Yah. So come on, y'all. Let's go to the Father prayer again. This is bold for November 29th, 2023. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you. We adore you. Thank you for this time of discipleship, breath of life discipleship. Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you, Yah, and we bless your name because, Yah, you are good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endureth to all generations. That's us. So, Father, we thank you for all you're doing and all you have done. Thank you for bringing us through another day, Father. I thank you for bringing me over the dangerous highways, Father, and freeways and airways and all that you did and all that you were doing, Father. I thank you for every person who traveled over the dangerous roadways, Father, our airways, our boats, Father, and how you kept them too, Father. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for bringing us into the place, Father, that you have for us at this time, and that is around your word. We must work the works of you who have sent us while it's day. Night is coming, Father. And so today we yield ourselves. We repent for anything we said, we done, we thought, we even imagined that it's not like you. And we pray that you were creating us a clean heart, renew within us a steadfast, a steadfast spirit, the right spirit. And so, Father, as we go into this time of study, we pray that you would be with us and upon us, Father, that you would be in us, stirring up, Father, in every way that you desire so that we could be everything that you've called us to be. Father, touch our instructor on tonight. Use him for your glory and your honor. And Father, let us have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the call, to the gathering of the people of Yah. We thank you. We praise you. We pray for every person, Father, who may be going through even in their bodies, Father. Send your word and heal them and deliver them from destruction. By the stripes of Yeshua, they are healed. We thank you that healing is the children's bread. We thank you that you restore us unto health and heal all of our wounds. Thank you for this time together and that we will receive healing and deliverance even as the word is going forth. We thank you. We praise you in the mighty, the matchless, the holy, the unbeatable, the incomparable, the inconquerable name that is above every name, the perfect name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we pray, amen, and bless Yahweh, amen. At this time, get your notebooks out, or if you got to get your phone out, however you make sure that you have dates and information, and please let's give ear to the communications that's being brought to us today by Minister Marquita Samuel. Over to you, Minister Samuel. All right. Thank you, Prophetess. Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Bold tonight. And so please join us each and every Tuesday for prayer at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. We are on Zoom and reaching the four corners of the globe. You will receive the reminder text with the Zoom link and the information that is also on the slide. We were blessed by the Weed Nation, all three members praying out about working diligently and being bold on Tuesday. And so thank you, Weed Nation, for that prayer. And please email info at bolem.info if you are having any challenges or questions accessing the Zoom or the recording. Continue to gather your nation and your family and friends and invite someone to join us as we move forward in prayer each and every Tuesday. And next, 
As we continue to grow in prayer, you are invited to join Teacher Kara Patterson each and every night at midnight for the Worshiping Word Warrior Prayer Watch. The dial-in number is on the slide and no access code is needed. Teacher Patterson and those who join this powerful prayer call are continuing to press into Yahweh's word through worship, prayer, and exhortation. Please join. Remember, all are welcome to participate. And next, you are invited to connect and donate to SOWER, which stands for Strangers, Orphans, Widows, and Emergency Relief. Elder Nathan Mitchell is the visionary of SOWER, and this powerful ministry reaches out to the homeless in the Houston region and beyond. You are invited to reach out to volunteer, donate, and learn more. The ways to donate are on the slide. You can donate via PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or mail your seed. And remember, every seed has the power to produce. And next, we have Rosebud Ministry. Ministries. All right, Rosebud Ministries. Prophetess Patricia Wright is the visionary, and this powerful ministry focuses on widows and those who have experienced loss in the Houston region and beyond. Rosebud Ministries is inviting you to join them for Fragrant Fridays, which is the second Friday of every month at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the next one will be Friday, December 8th, already next Friday, December 8th. Fragrant Fridays can be viewed live via Facebook Live on the Rosebud Ministries Facebook page or via the recording on YouTube at The Rosebud Ministries. To learn more or to volunteer, please reach out to Prophetess Wright and the ways to donate are on the slide. You can donate, donate via Cash App or through PayPal on the website. Remember, Rosebud Ministries, where your fragrance is required. And next, this Sunday, it is here. The time is here for the time management workshops, right? This Sunday, we will begin our two-part in-person time management workshops. So exciting when we could walk a plan out and see our way execute on our behalf, right, everyone? I know, you know, time management is something that's not always as exciting, but it's exciting to learn something new, right, and sharpen those skills as we prepare for our biblical new year, right? And so part one is going to be Sunday, December 3rd, and part two is Sunday, December 17th. Both trainings will occur at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at the DTC in Deer Park, Texas, right? As a reminder, the first session is an initial session, while the second session is a follow-up session to allow time for practical application and feedback. So whatever you learn, you can write notes, you can take questions, you could see any gaps, anything that you might miss and bring them back to that second session and ask questions, right? Therefore, registration for the December 17th session is not allowed without registration for the December 3rd session. However, you can still attend the December 3rd session without attending the December 17th session. When you go to Eventbrite, you go to the link there, it's very clear what you can select, but we're just trying to emphasize part one is the initial session and part two is the follow-up. They go together. You will, We will have a special guest time management specialist with us who's very excited to partner with us and teach us, right, and provide her expert advice and answer all of our questions. So start thinking about those gaps that you have and anything that you would like to learn, anything that's just never made sense about how people do their schedules or planning or whatever. The investment is $15 for one session or $20 for both sessions. The link is on the slide here, bolem, time management .eventbrite.com. Again, the link is bolem, time management dot eventbrite.com and registration is still open it opened on saturday and it is still open so remember you can invite a guest you can bring a friend children are allowed children under 12 i believe are free so all are welcome we want to make sure everyone's here to participate and learn because we all have to manage this resource called time right at all ages and so those outside of the local houston region you will be sent the link to attend virtually after sabbath worship service. So remember, no matter where you are, if you want to participate, register via the link. And if you are outside of the Houston region and will be remotely viewing the workshop, you'll be sent that link for the virtual portion after Sabbath worship service. So you'll get that in time to participate in the session. 
please continue to press into all that Yahweh is giving us to do as we are moving forward with the plans we drafted during our Feast of Tabernacles planning session for this 15th year and beyond. And let's get excited for this great opportunity coming this Sunday, December 3rd. And now back to Prophetess Anderson. Thank you so much, Minister Samuel. Thank you for the communications. Remember, it is important that during this time we go forth in better and optimal time management we have a lot to get done in this hour amen so if you have any questions during our q a time please let us know and we will be able to answer your questions remember we will not be providing child care our children of life or anything because that would mean that some of our adults would not be able to attend the workshop so we're going to have uh, some activity pages for our children uh, they, they will be sitting with you. So we just ask that you uh, make sure that you have the things that are needed uh, during that time to make sure they have um, that we can all be the end together and that there are not any distractions for you or the other attendees. Of course, you'll be able to step out into the lobby um, and care for your children as we do need to make sure that our children are okay during that time as well. All right, so Apostle Anderson, we can only see your eyes. So I don't know if the camera is, there we go. Yeah. All right, just wanna make sure that when we broadcast, they can see you, they can see your apostle. So, all right, y'all, are y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready for the word? Yay, me too, me too. And <laughs> Do at some point, it's been 15 years. Sometimes you gotta bring your own amen. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Sometimes you got to bring your own <laughs> amen. It's been 15 years. I knew one day. I didn't know the day was the day. Yeah. I knew one day this was going to happen. When it get too tired, I, I know where to go. All I gotta do is just bring my own amen. Amen. Just let it go. You know what I'm saying? You always sure you brought your own amen. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Time, I, I don't know if we could clap as loud as that, no, but at this know. time, put up your clapping hands and everything. Let's welcome our senior pastor as he teaches us the word. Amen. <laughs> I hear you. 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 Oh, goodness. All right, come on. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank and we praise you for what your word is going to do for us on tonight. We thank you for, for uh, safely keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger throughout this day. Father, we thank you as we come together on this bowl, Father, that we can hear what your word has to say and not only be a hearer of the word, Father, but be a doer of the word. Father, if there be any that are sick among us, I thank you for your word going to heal right now. If there be any that's down and depressed, I thank you for the word that's going to go already go and heal and sanctify and set the captives free. We thank you and we praise you, Father, as we go through this word, Father. We we thank you for the, the testimonies. We thank you that you are great and you're worthy to be praised. We thank we cover each and every person with, under the sound of my voice and those that are even coming back to view this 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 broadcast, Father. I thank you that your power, your authority will be shown evident through this through this Zoom. And we thank you and we praise in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. How's everybody doing out there? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. They put me on the big screen. I guess you know, I see myself in lights. Amen. I see myself in lights. And and as we are continuing, amen, to, to do the series on, I must work the works. How, you know what? I asked the question at the end. Amen. Let's just dive right off into it. Come on, media. Let's go ahead and, and put up the all right, we still got the workshop. I pray that you all take advantage of this workshop situation. You know, this time management workshop. Amen. You know, this is something that the that we all talked about during our time of of, of getting things together for this next biblical year. So I pray that you all take advantage of this situation and and, and you would invite someone and and so that they can also learn about time management amen so as we go through this this time about working the works amen this is part 13 here on this uh awesome day of november the 29th we're still in the month of 
November, amen. We celebrated some awesome people, amen, during this month. And as we go to the next slide, amen. We still want you to understand that you are capable, that you're worthy and amazing. Now, you know, when you're talking about doing work and some people, they, they feel overwhelmed. They feel sometimes that, you know, this is so much, but you know, when you're doing the work for Yahweh, Yahweh will give you, amen, what you need to accomplish the work that is that is set before you. And he will give you the strategies, amen. He will give you, you know, the, the wherewithal. He will, he will help you to understand, you know, what it is to do the work that he's called you to do in this day and this time. So in that, you know, with that being said, with that being said, you have to know that you're capable to do what he's called you to do. You have to know that you are worthy, amen, and you have to know that you are amazing because sometimes, you know, if we don't understand these simple things, this could this could hinder us from doing the work that Yahweh has called us to do because a lot of times we don't feel capable. We don't feel like we have the education. We don't feel like we have the spirit sometimes. We don't feel like we have the finances. It's a lot of things that can go into hindering us from working the works of him that sent us and you know when yeshua came to this earth he didn't allow those things to hinder him he knew that he had an assignment and he fulfilled the assignment amen as we go to the next slide hallelujah uh we you need to know that in jeremiah 29 that you know yahweh is not trying to set you up for failure he's not trying to you know bring doom and gloom to your life and to to make you feel like that there's nothing, you can't do anything. All things are possible to him, amen, that as you align yourself with Yahweh's will and his way, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, but I know that, that he don't have to think about it. He don't have to try to figure out what's going on. Yahweh, we're talking about the creator of all creation. Yahweh says he know the plans that he has, that, that he is planning for you that he's planning, which means that, that these are things that are far off, not just what's right now, that he that he says that I am planning, which means that he's thinking about your future. He's thinking about what's to come, amen? And he says, and then he goes on, because there's a comma right there, because you have to stop, say, well, if he knows what he's planning, well, what is the plan? You know, plans of peace and not of evil, uh, plans of shalom. Remember, shalom means destroying on the authority that's attached to chaos. He don't want chaos in your life. He don't want your life to be toxic. He don't want your life to be topsy turvy and, and not knowing where you're going. But he said he have plans of shalom, or plans of peace and not of evil to give you a future and an expectancy. Holy man, I'm sorry that you should be shouting glory because that means that Yahweh has some great plans for you. That Yahweh, and, and this, as we are uh, uh, posturing ourselves to be in his will and his way, you know, things got hard for Yeshua because he said, okay, you know, this, he, he started to, to sweat blood, and, but he said, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Amen. And, and this is something that we all have to understand is that, you know, as we are going through all of our, our situations and circumstances that Yahweh knows, he knows what's, he knows what you need. He knows what you are able to, to, to do. He's, he knows how much you can bear. He knows, you know, he's not trying to put anything on you that you can't handle, you know, with him in us and working through us, you know, there, there's nothing impossible. Amen. So as we understand that John and we, we are talking from the scripture of John 9, John 9, and especially starting at verse 4, because here it is, you know, the, 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 the uh, disciples, they asked the question, well, what was it that made this man blind or what, what was the situation? They're speaking from a religious, religious standpoint, not speaking from the kingdom, but speaking from a religious standpoint, because they religious, the religious system taught them that if you're in sin, that something is wrong with you, that you, if you were born in sin, or if you were born with any type of ailments or things happening in your life, it's because of sin. But here, uh, John 9 and 4 says, it is necessary. Yeah, and this is after, Yah, after Yeshua comes and try to explain, he's trying to in, in, interject the kingdom principles into the disciples that you can't think of it from from just a finite situation because there's a reason why you were born you are you are not a mistake come on you got to say i am not a mistake yahweh have me you know he allowed me to come i don't care the situation how you got here but you're here because you are here you are not a mistake and so here it is and now yeshua have to explain 
to the to the um to the disciples that you know we must work john 94 says it's necessary for me to work the works of him who sent me while it's day because uh night is coming when no one is able to work and and, and if you go into john 95 uh it says while i am in the world i am the light of the world now one of the things that i wanted to uh, talk about tonight is working energetically for Yahweh. I'm talking about, you know, we're not, if Yahweh has a work for us to do, we're going to do it with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our spirit, all of our soul. And we're going to do it energetically. Amen. Because I want you to understand that Yahweh created us to work. That's right. Yahweh created us to work. Just like he created us to worship, he created us to work. Amen. And so if he created us to work, we got to do it with all, we got to, we have to, we have to do it with joy. You know, we have to do it with passion. We have to, we, we have to do it with, with all of our might. Amen. We have to put everything into it for, for his will and for his way. So come on, let's go to Proverbs 10. I pray you have your scriptures with you, your, your Bible with you. We're going to go, we're going to start off in Proverbs, the 10th chapter. Amen. And, and verse four, then you need to understand that, that work, Yahweh has created us to work and work has been with us from the beginning. I'm talking about going back to Genesis, going back to the better sheet of your life. Amen. To the beginning of your life. Work is always in, and it's always how you approach work. Amen. You know, and how you, how you, how you visualize or how you see work. Cause sometimes, you know, some people, they, you know, especially if their, if their work week starts on a Monday morning, some people dread going to work some people and but then you know I've, I've, i'm coming to understand that you know we're working the works of him that sent us that that means that he has an assignment for us and we have to make sure that we are doing the assignment that the father has given to us or that he's given to us and sometimes it, it, you know you may feel overwhelmed you may feel tired you may you, there's a lot of things there's a lot of emotions let me put it that way because i might call out some and say well i don't feel that i don't feel that but this is what i'm feeling there's a lot of emotions that 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 may take part in this situation you know because everybody's excited about doing kingdom work but when it's time to do the work you know the excitement a lot of time it dies down because of what is called what you have to do in order you know what he's called you to do the assignment that he's called you to that's why you know one of the things we want to talk about is doing the working energetically for Yahweh I'm talking about just putting your all into it being happy being full of joy amen ready to just go at it you know what I'm saying but you know it's something you know if if, if it's I see when 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 Yeshua had to go through the the beatings and so he had to go through all the things for you know they all you know think about being beat with cat nine tails that's literally ripping your skin who wants to go through that but he knew that that was an assignment that he had to finish he had to go through these things amen to show us amen that it could be done and guess what he didn't stop there you know he could have said wait whoa 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 you know hold on you hit me one time he could have called a legion of angels down and just wiped out everybody but he didn't do that he knew that he had to keep going so proverbs the 10th chapter uh, verse 4 Proverbs 10 and 4, it says, poor is he who works with the lazy hand. Oh, my God. Uh, but the hand of the hard worker makes rich. Poor is he who, that means that you don't want, you know, you don't want to put anything into it. You slothful. You, you, you don't want to really just do what he, what you're supposed to do for the job. You, you know, you're, you're showing up and, 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 but yet you, you don't want to be there. You know, there's an old, I always talk about this song, you know, that, that, that was uh, from back in the day. It says that my, my, my body is here, but my, but my mind is, no. My mind is on the other side of town. I, I I forgot. I ain't you know. I forgot how to go. Uh, some you know. But anyway, it's saying that that your your body may be there, but your mind may not be there. Your body is there, but your excitement is not there. You know when it, and we're talking about doing kingdom work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it says poor is he who works with the lazy hand, but the hand of the hard worker makes rich, which means that when you put your excitement, when you put your all into it, Yahweh want to make sure that, that you are rewarded. Amen. So, so he said that you can't just come in and half doing the job or trying to cut corners on doing a job. Who wants to live in the house of a person, you know, when the person has built the house, but yet he cut corners. 
Amen. And 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 then you you paid your hard earned money for this house, but yet they've cut so many corners that they, because you said, well, I don't want to pay that much, or I don't want to do that much, or you know. And now you and so when you move into the house, all of a sudden you notice that the corners that have been cut, you notice that things weren't done the right way. The all of a sudden the tiles start buckling. The paint start peeling and the electricity is, is working in some places, but not working in other places, you know, and, and that's, that's because you have a person with a lazy hand that's trying, they, they want it out, but yet they don't want to do everything it takes to make the house right. But yet you have to find that person who is in, who's excited about building or who's excited about buying that house, who's excited about moving in a house. But you have, so that person that says, but the hand of the hard worker makes rich. Amen. So let's Let's go to Proverbs 13 and 4. Proverbs the 13 chapter, verse 4 says, the, the, the being of the lazy one craves, but has not. The being of the lazy one craves, but has not. While the being of the hard worker are enriched. The being of the lazy one, yeah, you sitting down on the couch, you, you know, and all these thoughts are going, and you know, you praying that Yahweh just drop a bag of money on, you know, right beside you, it won't work that way, you know, because you have to go through the process. That's the thing about working the works. Are you going through the process to get with the, to get the the outcome that Yahweh has for you? This is why we can't cut corners. Are you going through the process? Because a lot of times we we say we think we're going through a process, or we say we're going through a process, and and we're not seeing the results, and so we're thinking like, oh my goodness, you know what's what's really going on? But it says the the being of the lazy one craves, but has not. And so while the being of the hard worker are enriched, you know, it's like, my yeah, what do we, okay, father, I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen to your, to your, your, your plans. You, you said that, you know, what you're planning for me. So father, give me the plans that you are planning for me. So, so that I can walk in your statues. I can walk in your will. I can walk in your way. Amen. And so, uh, so we're knowing that we can't, in other words, if we're talking about working for Yahweh energetically or, or just being excited about Yahweh, we can't be lazy. We, we, we can't, we, we can't just sit up there and, and, and just, and, and, and think of, you know, that we thinking that he's going to, to come, you know, just walk through the door. Yahweh could do anything. Let me say this right now. Yahweh could do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. You know, but we have to put, make sure that we're in the posture we're doing what the fathers call us to do so that we can work the works of him that sent us while this day. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 16, the 16 chapter. Yeah, we're going to be calling out some scriptures tonight. Proverbs, the 16 chapter, uh, verse three says, commit your works to Yahweh and your plans shall be established. Commit your works to Yahweh. Have you committed your works to Yahweh? Are you committing what he's called you to do? Are you committing these things that say, Yahweh, I, I'm, you know, you give me the wisdom, you give me the knowledge. I want to commit everything to you. I want to make sure that I am fulfilling the call that you have given me on this, in this day and in this hour. I want to commit everything to you commit your works to Yahweh now we need you need to understand that your works you know what does this word say about the works you know what does the word say about you following the process of the works amen and it says hey your your plan shall be established so in other words it's not just you just coming up with something off the fly he's giving you this is through prayer through fasting he you know he's giving you the what you need to work the works in this in this earth realm Amen. You're trying to bring, you, you want to make sure that you're postured so that the, the works he has from you from the heavenly realm can come through so that you, now it's in the earth realm and we're making all, the, all things are made possible to him that believe. So we're making sure that 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 the, the works that he has for us, it's not just sitting up in the, in the heavenly realms. That, that we are hearing and not only being here, not only hearing, but we're doing what he's called us to do here in the earth realm. So we want you to understand that as you're working the works, the kingdom works, not just any works, not just any work, the kingdom works. As you're working the works of Yahweh that sent you here while this day that you have to commit, commit yourself, commit your mind, commit everything to Yahweh. Amen. And so you, it's, once again, Proverbs 16 and 3 says, commit your works. 
Commit your works to Yahweh, and your plans shall be established. Amen. Now, let's go over here to Colossians, the third chapter. Yeah, go, let's go over to Colossians the third because we're still talking about doing things energetically. We're still talking about doing things with passion. We're still think, talking about doing things through the power of Yahweh. So Colossians the third chapter, we're going to go down to the 23rd verse. Amen. And, and, and this is something because I'm telling you, the, the words of Yah, you know, that has been written in the scriptures, man, it, they are powerful. They, I'm telling you, when you when you really uh, uh, posture yourself for this word, Amen. You can work the works and never and not have burnout, and not have burnout. You can work the works of Him that sent you and you not be burnt out because He's going to make sure that, that 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 everything that He's called you to do and that you're doing that He is going to establish through you. Colossians the third chapter verses twenty three. Uh, we're going to do verse 23 and 24. Verse 23 of Colossians, the third chapter says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the master and not to men. Amen. You know, one of the things that we have to understand in this day and time that, you know, we're talking about souls, you know, reaching in and bringing souls out of darkness into the marvelous light. And there are going to be different types of people. They're going to have different types of mindset. They're going to have different things that is just bothering them. And they need an answer. They need an answer. You know, as you're working the works and you're talking about, you're dealing with the people through the scripture, through the spirit of Yahweh. It says that whatever you do, do it heartily and as to the master and not to men. Amen. Verse 24 says, knowing that from the master, you shall receive uh the inherit the uh, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance amen that, now that's something that you should really be shouting about amen knowing that from the master you shall receive the re the reward of the inheritance it is the master messiah yeshua you serve it's the master that you serve so so once again you know a lot of times people don't like their supervisor a lot of times people don't like the people that they work for, but I'm here to tell you when you're doing kingdom working and you and Yahweh has has given you everything that you need to do the work. Amen. You need to know that you're not doing it for men. Now you're doing it to get men out of the darkness into the marvelous light. But and then once again, you know, a lot of times people will follow you when you when you when you're excited about what Yahweh is doing in your life. If you if you want to really just go out and and evangelize, they need to see the joy of Yahweh being your strength. They need to they don't need to you don't need to go out there and and like oh we going we just we just trying to do we just trying to get by. No no no, they need to know that Yahweh is your joy, that Yahweh is your strength. Amen. And, and that you're not just doing it for men, but you're doing it unto Yahweh. You're doing it because you're bringing people out of this darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. So let me ask you another question. Are you enjoying the work? Are you? We're going we gonna to talk about this, you know, in just a few minutes. I got a couple of more scriptures, but I want to I want to ask you, you know, the work that Yahweh has set up for you. Are you enjoying it? Oh, man, that's going to be something good right there. So let's go over to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. Yes, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. I, I want to, are you enjoying the work? Amen. You know, or, or you feel like this is, is too much. Or, or we don't need to, we, it don't take all that. You know, people have different views about working. People have different views about even being saved. People have different views about working in the kingdom. But what is your, what is, are you enjoying the work of, of him that sent you while it's day? Okay, it's Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. We're going to go down to verse 24. We're going to go down to verse 24. Amen. And, and I want you to, because I'm going to ask these questions later on. I want you to have your, your answers ready. I want you to be ready to, to, under, to, 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 to answer the questions. Amen. Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, verse 24 says, A man could do, could do no better but to eat and drink and enjoy himself in his labor. That too, I saw, was from the hand of Elohim. Ecclesiastes uh, 2 and, and let me see, hold on, make sure I got this right. All right, All right yeah. 2 and 25 says, for who eats or who finds enjoyment without him. For who eats 
and who finds enjoyment without him. You know, the thing is that, you know, once your life has been changed, that you know that the work that's ahead of you, that the work that Yahweh has put forth in front of you, that, you know, look here, he wants you to enjoy the works that you're doing. He don't want you to feel flustered. He don't want you to feel down. He don't want you to feel lazily. He don't want you to feel like oppressed and depressed because of the work that he has assigned to your hands. A lot of times we we, we feel these way because of people, because you feel like people are not receptive to the work that you're doing, that you've done all this, all the things that he's called you to do, but yet you feel like, oh, they don't want to hear what I have to say. Why am I out here? Why am I doing what I'm doing. Now, you got to enjoy the work that Yahweh has put before you. A lot of times we're not getting the benefits of the work because we don't enjoy the work. We're not getting what we're supposed to receive because we're not enjoying what the Father has put in front of us, knowing that you are well capable to do exceedingly and abundantly more. I'm here. I'm telling you, I'm excited because the more I, I begin to study, study the word, it's like, Father, I, you know, I, I had to ask myself that question. Am I enjoying the work? Am I enjoying the work? Because 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 when it comes down to it, you know, I can't I, I can't focus on who's left. I can't focus on who's talking about me. I can't focus on who don't like me. I can't because the scripture cl- clearly said that we're not doing this for men. We're doing this to the father. We're doing this to the father. And, and because a lot of times people don't agree with everything. You A lot of times y'all won't talk about what you believe because you know that your family, your friends, they don't, they don't agree with you. They don't agree that we don't celebrate Christmas. They don't agree that we don't celebrate Easter. They don't agree that we celebrate all these holidays and, and they don't celebrate the holy day. They don't agree upon that stuff. But it's to, it's to Yahweh be the glory. Yahweh has put this in his word. If we're going to work the works of him that said, I got to follow what his word said. And then I got to enjoy when Passover comes through. I got to enjoy, you know, when unleavened bread comes around. I got to enjoy first fruit because that's what my Savior, he gave his life. I got to enjoy Shavuot. I got to enjoy Yom Kippur, Yom Teruah. I got to enjoy Tabernacles. Not just because we're all getting together and we get to eat and we get to, you know, I got to enjoy because that's what in his word, he said that he called the feasts. That he called for us, that he want to meet with us during, he didn't want, he don't want to meet with you during Christmas. He didn't call Christmas. He don't, he ain't talking about meeting with you during, he didn't call Easter. That's what the Catholics did. They let them, (laughs) let them meet. I'm going to meet Yahweh over there at Passover. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. You can go over there and go alone and get along with these people if you want to. But if you're going to find yourself being burnt out, trying to trying to get people to like you, trying to get people to, 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 to you trying to go with them, when they're not following the word. It, I guarantee you, it's more of us than it is of them. Yeah. But, but the thing is, are you doing your part in working the works to bring them out of darkness to understand what Yahweh is doing? Or do you want to just go along and get along? See, that's when people start getting mad and, and, and then they start trying to challenge you. They want to challenge you about what the word said. Well, they don't know the word themselves. They're going off cliches. They're going off what they heard somebody say on, on, on early one Sunday morning. They're going by what they heard, not what they studied, not what the scripture says. But what they heard, and so here you are, and then you got to ten, you got to stand ten toes down on what you believe. A lot of times we're not working the words because we're not standing ten toes down, so we can't enjoy the work. <laughs> My yeah. But he's telling us, look, a man could do no better but to eat and drink and enjoy himself in his labor. That too, I saw was was from the hand. I'm telling you, I mean, this this is something with the how the word brings this out. That was from the hand of Yah. He wants you to enjoy. He wants you to enjoy. But yet, you know, but if, if you sit up there, you still try, you still playing, you know, what's that? Uh, not hopscotch. You still playing double dutch with the word. You still want to hang with them, but then you want to find, no, it don't work that way. Because when they reject you, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Wow. So, so it's very important for us. 
Now, when, when we are enjoying the, how much, the, okay, yeah. when we're enjoying the work of the kingdom, now you gotta, you gotta realize, so, uh, am I doing the best work for the kingdom? Am I doing the best work for the kingdom? Am I good? Come on, you got to ask yourself, why is it that there's an empty seat over there? Okay, yeah, I invited, so you invited one, invite 100 people, maybe 10 to show up. Invite 200 people, maybe 20 to show up. But you just can't invite one and then get discouraged when the one don't show up. Amen. You have to keep on, you know, letting people know how, you know, how this has affected your life, how this work has affected your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and look here, I, I, I told I told one of my pastors, I said, look, I'm not trying to be the best kept secret. Nowhere. I ain't trying to be a secret to nobody. Everybody need to know how Yahweh has blessed us, how Yahweh has has uh, has raised us up to sit in heavenly places far above principal. Everybody need to know that. But but if we're too ashamed because we say Yahweh and the people still saying God, look here, you got to know who Yahweh is. You got to know who Yeshua is. You got to know, you know, and when you're working the works, it's more, it, it, it comes out more and more. Who is Yeshua? Yeshua is salvation. Well, who is Yahweh? Oh my goodness. You, it, when you, it's, it's, it's a known fact. When you don't know the, the reason or the purpose of a thing, it's inevitable that you will abuse it. So you need to know why you're doing the work. Why you are working the works of him that sent you? Because if you don't know why you working the works, then you're going to go off doing your own thing. And when you don't get the results that you're looking for, you get mad and say, well, you know, I, I, I start all of a sudden you become one of those people that, that oh, all this stuff didn't start happening to me. Still, I start doing a, a, a Sabbath work. No, 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 no. I'm here to tell you that is not the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self stuff was happening. You ignored it when you was over there with the sun worshipers. But then all of a sudden you get over here, you want to complain. No, 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 no. Either we're going to trust Yah and do what he's called us to do, or we're not. Amen. My, my champ agrees with me. <laughs> we going to either do what he's called us to do, or we not. So are we doing the best work for the kingdom? Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. Proverbs 22 and 29 says, do you see a man who is skilled in his work? He does stand before sovereigns. He does not stand before obscure ones. My y'all. Are we working the works of him that sent us? Are we doing the best of work? Are we just going along to get along and complaining that we don't have, we don't have? Are we going and doing what Yahweh has called us to do? Are we, are we just walking in the clouds, walking in the fog? <laughs> and we ain't talking about the favor either. Hallelujah. So it says, Proverbs 22 and 29 says, do you see a man who is skilled in his work? Now, when you are working the works, are you picking up the skills to work the works? Or are you just going along to get along? Are you just going to? You just gonna buy your, you know, you gonna uh, as, uh, the people in the world. We gonna fake it till we make it. We gonna fake it till we make it. Now it says once again, Proverbs twenty two and twenty nine. It says, "Do you see a man who is skilled in this? Are you skilled? Are you skilled? Now you have to be skilled because the spirit of Yah is in you. So you are skilled to do the work that He's called you to do. But are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you?" Because it says he does he does stand before full sovereign, which means that because of the work that you're doing, that that you are going to be made known, that that you, you're going to be that you're going to stand before those who are are very palatial and important. He he not trying to stand before just anybody. I want to make sure that my boss is happy with the work that I'm doing. I'm standing, if, if I'm skilled in doing the work, my boss is going to be happy with the work that he's assigned me to do. In my study in the manual, I said uh, uh, some, 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 uh, some Sabbaths ago, we have the manual. You know, a lot of people, they're trying to go off and, and they want to read all the, the, the other the books that's not in them. No, no, let's read the manual. Let's get the manual straight first. And so that we know the job that we are here to do. We know the work that we are assigned to do. 
And then I just don't want to just haphazardly do the work. I want to be skilled in doing the work. Come on now. Now, if you agree with me, come on, you need to put on this chat that I am skilled to do the work of Yah. I'm skilled. And which means that that you're going that, that you're not going to complain that you're not going to sit up you're not trying to take a 15 minute break every five minutes that you're working. You know what I'm saying? That you go you go do exactly what the father he says. That's my son. That's my daughter. And they are skilled. And they are wet. They are they are capable. They are worthy. And they are amazing at the job that they're doing. Maya. <laughs> Okay, Ecclesiastes the ninth chapter. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. We got. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. End right here. I think I, I didn't got excited. We, let's go to Ecclesiastes the ninth chapter, in verse ten. Yeah, I am skilled to do the work of Yahweh. Come on now. Come on. You are skilled to do the work of Yahweh. Ecclesiastes the ninth chapter, verse ten says, "All that your hands find to do, do it with your might." For there is no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where they are going. My, my. When that, so, so basically, when that, when that night comes, it ain't nothing you can do. It's done. So even in your, in your let's just, let's, let me put it in the, into a, a perspective here. When you, you know, some people work from nine to five. After five o'clock, you should be done doing your job. But before five o'clock, you should be you should be found guilty doing everything you can to be successful at what you're doing. Now, after five o'clock, your time is up. I'm just put, trying to put this in perspective. So so once again, all that your hands find to do, do it with your might. Don't complain. Don't don't go and once again try to half do and 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 not put your all into the work because this is what happens you know because you know we've been taught from a a a a churchy anti society that that yeah we we the the minds it's a religious mindset that we 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 hide or that we don't you know we we'll do it in front of that person but we don't really when it's time when that person leaves we just don't want to do anything at all. You know, you know, we, we once again, you know, we, we have to understand that and we can't, you know, but once again, when you're on uh, an assembly line, you can't step there and be lazy on no assembly line. Oh, Lord, no, you cannot be a lazy person. on this. You have to make sure that you're doing your job and you're doing your job correctly, because if you don't do your job correctly, it's going to mess up someone else down the assembly line. So you have to make sure that as you are working the works of him that sent you, that you are not, you're doing, you're skilled at what you're doing and that you're doing it with all your might. Because at, at a certain time, it's going to be time for you, that time is going to be over. Amen. So I pray that you were blessed, that you were challenged, that you were changed. Come on, I, I want to ask. I want to ask a question. You know, uh, you know what's what's keeping us from from doing the work energetically? Okay. Before you ask the question, may I please just give you just a, just give you and the congregation just what the father is saying about this? May I? Is that all yes, right? Yes, please go ahead. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all know Apostle is truly speaking the word of Yah on tonight, and I just wanted to share this because he doesn't know this uh, because I hadn't had time to to talk with him. So today. Um, well, the, over the last few days, Holy Spirit was asking me a question, and this was about my work that I work for my company. He said, you, you know, you're very gifted in things. Are you leaning on your gifts to do the work, or are you giving it all you have to open up realms that I want to open up? You're not the only one that works for this company. I may want to use you to open up realms for other people, but if, and it comes from different reasons, y'all, you might feel like you're not getting paid enough. You might not, you might feel like, well, they did me wrong and I ain't giving my, all my ooey gooey stuff to them. You, you, different things might come up to you about the situation because of maybe they've done you wrong. I've gone mm -hmm. through so many things. So, uh, in, in this, in my role. And so like, 
you, it may be that they came against you. It may be that they were plotting on you. I'm telling y'all what I know. Mm -hmm. And so you start backing up because you like, mm -mm, not. And today, Holy Spirit, I have not talked to apostle about this, y'all. Holy Spirit, as I, we were on the road, y'all. We were on the road from Oklahoma City to Tulsa and then Tulsa to Oklahoma City. And as my, as I was speaking, with my manager holy spirit was just on a roll he was on a roll tell him this you need to give this idea you need to do this you need to do that and as i was saying it holy spirit said now that's the level of energy and excitement and passion that i need to see you working at i don't need you backing up because of any reason work at that level because that's the level that i have called you into and i was just like sometimes if you say the word lazy to me, I say, I'm not lazy. I'm not, I ain't no lazy. I ain't no sluggard. I ain't no sluggish. I, I does the work. You know, I'm just, I'm going to say it right for the children. I do the work and all of this, you, you say these things, but sluggish and all those things is not, it's exactly what you described to us tonight. It's not coming up to Yahweh's standard. Mm -hmm. you, we have our own standards about, about what we believe that a sluggard is, but Yahweh told me, he said, if you lean on your gifts, that is beneath where I told you to go with this because your gifts are supposed to then make room for you mm -hmm. to go into other realms of the spirit so that you can release it in the time and the place that I have told you. And Yahweh is doing this thing. I'm like, Father, but one other thing, Apostle, I wanna share because by two or three, let every word be established. Y'all, Apostle Dandy on uh, For Yahweh's Glory on Bible Study on Sunday released a mighty, blessed, challenging, and changing word. And she was teaching from Ezekiel 37 about the breath of Yahweh. Now, I'm going to say this, then I'm going to leave it. Apostle Dandy, I'm leaving it right here because in Colossians 3, I did not know this. I was tonight years old. It's one of my scriptures that I really love, y'all. When Apostle went to Colossians 3, I said, that's it right there, right? So uh, Colossians, well, all of the scriptures he shared, I was saying that. <laughs> but okay, Colossians 3 and 23, when it says whatever we do, to do it heartily, okay? And um, hold on, in the King James Version, because I want y'all to remember how it sounds. In, yeah, in the King James Version, it says, heartily right and so that word heartily get this y'all it is greek g 5590 and no surprise about what it, it not maybe what it means but the word is psyche p-s-y-c-h-e not psychic psyche your mindset do it with the right mindset but y'all listen to this because Apostle Dandy was talking about the need for the breath of Yahweh, the breath, mm -hmm. and how it's his breath that brought the bones and the sinews together. You got you to gotta get in on that study, I'm telling you. Ask her for the, for the link, I'm telling you, it was so awesome. And when you go to Psyche to see the very first definition, it says breath, the breath of life, my Yah today the vital force which animates the body and shows itself in breathing yes yes the, everything you do how are we gonna be named the breath of life and yahweh said in everything that you do do it with the breath of life y'all y'all got to come on here look what yahweh is speaking to us apostle dandy wow i was like what this is the word that Yah is telling us that we cannot, because of discouragement, we've been through a lot of things. I know I've been through a lot of things, but in this time, we got to have some joy and some energy and passion That's right. in doing what the Father has said. Apostle, thank you for this word. I have been truly blessed. I've been challenged. I've been changed. Thank you, Apostle Dandy, for obeying Yah about this breath because we are called, Yahweh called us the breath of life. Right. And everything we do, we must do it 
with his breath. So thank you, Apostle, for allowing me to share. I'm turning the breath over to Apostle. Thank you. Well, all right. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I, I really pray that you all were, were blessing you were challenging you were changed because we're what we're we're doing uh these series to really get into the marrow of your of your of your of your body, of your being. Be, because you know, it makes no sense for us to every week come to a place and think that we're being restored, but then we walk out not restored or we walk out still doing the same thing, but thinking something different is going to happen. It is, I'm telling you, Yahweh is, 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 is merciful. He's sovereign. He's, he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. I'm telling you, don't ever go through, don't ever feel like you're going through and you're the only one going through. Yahweh's here to bring you out and to bring you to another dimension of his glory, to bring you to another dimension of who he is, because he want to see you successfully work the works of, of him that sent you here, that you're here, why you're here. He want to see you, you know, he, he don't want to see you going through and your in your in your mind, in your 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 heart or your breath is not into the assignment that he's given you to do. That's the, that, the one of the worst things that, that could possibly happen is that, you know, the assignment is there, but then you're you're not there. You know, you're not there to 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 do what once again, you know, what, what, what the prophet says in, in Colossians 3 and 23, and whatever you do, which means that there should be some focus on what you're doing. And what you're doing, you should do it hardly. You should do it with the breath. You should do it with the mind of 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 life, with the breath of life, not not with the breath of doom, not with the breath of toxicity or or negative. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't allow these things to just because it looks a certain way now. You don't know what it's gonna look like ten minutes or ten days from now. You have no clue. But see, the thing is, if I'm death and life is in the power of the tongue. And, and it's talking about, you know, whatever you're you going to have, the you, whatever fruit that you eat, you're going to have, which means if you if you eat the fruit of negativity, don't expect life to come out of it. But if you eat the fruit of life, expect life and more abundantly to come out of it. So so now so now now, you know, as we ask the question, are you enjoying the work? I want to ask you, are you enjoying the work or are, are you enjoying the work of Yahweh? I, I'm not talking about your physical. And really, I might be talking about it because your physical may be stopping you from doing what's natural, what's doing your spiritual. But are you enjoying the work? Come on, I want everybody. I, I just, I need somebody to answer the question. Are you enjoying the work? And and I'm not really trying to, you know, the 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 cliche. And so I, I want to really, I want you to really take a look at yourself and say, Am I enjoying the work that Yahweh has called me to do? Okay, how many people? Everybody's muted right now. Don't let me start up muting folk. Okay, okay, who's that? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, Apostle. <laughs> oh my goodness, Apostle Anderson, thank you so much for another challenging word. And I'm enjoying the work. <laughs> Amen. 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 It, it, comes with a price sometimes but it is so worth it that's right and on the back of that as you were speaking about that yeah you said something and holy spirit niched it into my spirit you said yahweh can do anything but fail that's right how many if i ask everyone do you believe that everybody would put their hands up right both hands but what holy spirit said to me if you truly believe that mm -hmm. and you truly believe that holy spirit lives on the inside of you and if yahweh can do anything but fail there is not a cell or bone in us that can fail because Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. That's right. 
and we forget that. And like mm -hmm. Prophetess say, said earlier, we depend on our gifts rather than depending on his word, rather than enjoying it, knowing yeah. that he even promised us in his word, when it's time to open your mouth, I will put the words in your mouth. That's right. And when we are excited about it, it shows in the quality of our work but it also reflects the level of our commitment and the right. of integrity to the work. So as for me, I am totally enjoying the work. Totally enjoying it. Amen. You know, nobody knows the, the price that each one of us is paid to get to where we are. You know, and I, I when I when I did the study of uh, when we talked about you know getting the the oil from from the from the um, from the oil tree from the plant and the how it has to be crushed and and what it has to go through to get the purity you know the first drops out this is which is the extra extra version. And and so it's it, a lot of times people don't want to go through the the crushing of what it takes to really fulfill what Yahweh has put us in this world to do. You know, we all want it easy. We all want it. We don't want to have to suffer. You know, what's the the, the fruits of the the spirit? Joy, yeah, shalom, peace. You know, they they go through all, but when they get to the long suffering portion. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you mean to tell me we got yes, yes, yes. Be, because you know, you, the thing is, a lot of people they want to go the easy route or the cheap route, or they want to cut corners. You know, they want to use other people's oil instead of using their own oil. And so we got to know that it's going to cost us something to work the works. It's going to cost us something to to really get to where the father really wants and then it's something that you I'm like okay apostle you said i need to enjoy this i need to mm -hmm. enjoy what what yahweh is doing i need to enjoy the yes you you it hurts mm -hmm. but you have to mm -hmm. enjoy you have to endure you have to 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 go through in order to get to you know there's no short mm -hmm. you know people talk about the um you know, the storms that come, but Yahweh is the one that will give the umbrella to help you through the storm and have you dancing mm -hmm. at the end. So, so, so here it is, you know. Okay. Apostle. Somebody else? Okay. I, I'm, I, my, my screen is a little different. Okay. Is that your Apostle Wells? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I greet you all. I greet you all in the name of Abba Father. You know, I tell people I'm on an assignment. Mm -hmm. with whatever it is I'm doing. And on the assignment that I'm on with the huh, hello, the work that I'm doing, uh, the director of operations informed me that you can do this whatever way you do it. So you, you know how to do it with the, with, the, with, the, with the students. He wouldn't say it was the anointing on my life that mm -hmm. the young people are drawn to me. And I'm humbled because I'm so thankful. Today, a young lady, she came back. She had been out several days. She, she came straight to me, and she was supposed to be in another area, but she mm -hmm. said she had to come to me. And I'm, I'm humbled with all I've had an opportunity to grow through. And I tell folks, situations allows me to grow through it. When the Holy Spirit told me, you teach, don't you test your students? I, and this was years ago, I see, yes, sir. He said, that's what I do. He said, the only way I allow Job to go through what I let him go through is because I knew what I'd invested in him. Mm -hmm. And when Yahweh knows what he has invested in us, he doesn't have a problem with allowing us to pass the test. If we're willing, Isaiah 119 says well over there, when it says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The Bible says, you will reap if you faint not. He lets us know, yes, you got to go through, 
and you said it, Apostle, to get to. I'm That's so great. humble and excited about what y'all is doing. I tell you, it's amazing mm-hmm. to see what the Father is doing in and through my life. And I'm yet humbled. Thank you for allowing Yahweh to use your apostle. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle Wells. Love you to life. And we praise Yahweh for you and all that he's doing to you and through you where you are. Amen. Amen. Is there someone? I think uh, it's Brother T. Brother T, are you out there? Did you have your, uh, did you unmute your mic? Brother Taran. Did you still there? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Okay. All right. Amen. Apostle, I'll say that basically, I I think quite honestly, I have not always enjoyed the work. Um, I want to just be very honest about that. But it is those times, like even through this word on tonight, that the Father reminds you that this is not something that you can just um that enjoyment is just necessarily going to come to you that Mm -hmm. you need to be intentional about getting in the flow of enjoyment of what the father is doing excuse me in and through you and it's just like you said and apostle uh dandy said apostle well said you will go through things and and the crushing and all of those things are real it's a real thing Sometimes you you don't know exactly why you're going through what you're going through. Sometimes it is like that, but you can't let that take away um, from your enjoyment. That's right. The enjoyment and entreating the joy. And I, I was thinking about when you were teaching that it is really a trick of the enemy and even our flesh joining in with it because if joy is our strength Mm -hmm. and we don't have joy in walking this walk out then we lose our strength Mm -hmm. and we start feeling down and then your insides and the cellular level everything and you if you don't keep on reminding yourself what apostle dandy said earlier that if yahweh's in me all of my cells are successful that's right one of them is a failing cell you know, and but sometimes because we walk through things, they're tests to see where we stand and what you brought about on tonight. I really appreciate because you don't realize sometimes that you're going into a place of not enjoying and you will start turning and thinking differently. Everything is different when you're not enjoying yourself. It That's really right. is. That's it right. really is. And so thank you for this. I think we um really have to be intentional to enjoy the work you know because this is why we're in the earth you know and if we find ourselves from what you said on tonight if i find myself going back you know down that path i'm i'm certainly going to stop and ask the father to really deal with me about it because it's an issue with me it's not him that has the issue it's me with the issue so again thank you for the word so powerful on tonight Amen. 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 Any more questions, y'all? All All right. Hi, can I say something? Yes, of course you can. What you just said, prophetess, made so much sense. And I'm not just speaking, I'm not speaking so much about um, your words for Yahweh, but just in life general. If you're doing something and you don't have the joy of what you're doing, it's not going to come out good. And that, has, that can be applied to our everyday life, yes. everything that we do. And, you know, now I can understand why there are some things that are harder for me to do because I'm really not feeling it. Exactly. I needed that. Thank you so much. Oh, praise Yahweh. And you know what? Um, Kira Nation, Sister Kira, 
I actually, even in this example, was talking about just, just my work. See, this is the thing that sometimes I get, um, the father has to remind me that all of my life work, life's work belongs to him. When I go to my job, when I, if I decide to work in the yard, <laughs> if I, if whatever I do working at my house, you know, cleaning up, whatever it is, all of that work belongs to him. And, and how am I, how am I acting when he say, you need to wash these dishes? And you know what? Yeah. That still is work for him because if he gave it to me, then I need to be a faithful steward over it. So all of it, it should be as unto him. But I guess I wasn't, I really wasn't seeing those things like that. And when Apostle brought this up, you're right. You're absolutely right, Sister Kira. It don't turn out the same when you don't enjoy what you're doing. It does not. And sometimes it is because we have separated, you know, what I do at my job from what I do for Yahweh when all of it is his work. All If I believe that I am his workmanship, then everything I do should be us unto him. And this word really brought that to light for me. And that's why I'm sharing that with you. So I have to go back and talk with y'all about these things, because if I will enjoy what he's given, he's blessed me to have a job up until the point that he'll tell me that, okay, that's it. Well, I need to do everything and complete all the assignments he may have for me on that job in business, everything. So thank you again for sharing that, uh, Sister Kiri. I really appreciate it. Bless, yes, 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 yes. I understand, Sister Deshaun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to sit in it. You really do. It's a powerful lesson. It's so true. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. We're going to go to the Father in prayer, all right? Thank Yahweh for Apostle again in this word. Sure. The ways to give are in the chat. And so, um, but before we do that, come on, let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love you, we adore you. Thank you for these, your precious people. Thank you for this powerful, potent, this life-changing, life-altering word that was released from our apostle. Father, let us not um, uh, forget. Let us not let it fall to the ground. Let us not say, oh, I heard that word before. Let us take this and ponder it in our hearts. And when we finish pondering, let it be that it altered us to enjoy what you have assigned us to do. Father, now it's becoming very clear why you're saying we need to hear from you and ask questions and be clear what it is you are telling us to do, because then you're going to require us to enjoy what it is that you have required us to do. You're going to require us to do it energetically. You're going to require us to do it with passion. You're going to require for us to do it heartily as unto you and not unto man. That's where we have messed up, Father, because at my job, I feel like that's as unto man because I work for a man-made company. But yeah. Father, if you sent me there, every work that I do belongs to you, and I can't lose sight of that. So Father, we pray you would speak to us, tell us what to do, tell us how to do it, and tell us, Father, about the ways that we have become less and less energetic, less and less passionate, less and less excited about doing what it is that you've actually put us in the earth to do, Father. Why would anybody want to serve you if we're moping around our jobs? Why would anybody want to serve you if we're angry all the time because of our frustrations? Why would anybody want to serve you and we have not been the best representation? of you so father forgive us for that we repent and return to you yah father we pray that you would create in us a clean heart in this area in this space that we may please you and honor you in everything that we do thank you for our apostle father touch him encourage him strengthen him father no retaliation no backlash no scheme of the enemy will be able to penetrate the wall and the hedge of protection you have around his life we thank you, bless him in his ministries, his businesses, Father, everything that you've given and placed in his hands. We thank you for the word on tonight. We pray blessing upon him for his obedience to release this word unto us. 
Father, and we just pray that tonight as we go to sleep, we'll be peaceful rest as you will speak to us and download to us what it is you want to say in this last and evil days. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. In the matchless name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. And Father, bless all those who give into your kingdom work in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Love y'all to life. Shalom, y'all. Thank you for the word, Apostle Anderson. Bless you. Thank, thank you, you, Apostle Anderson. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, y'all. Have a blessed.